Pacho Man, bring it on. Thank you, Pacho Man. Welcome to Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. Day two, my name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spa, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation, ranked number six in the world. Woo! Give it up for Cat Matthews, this huge studio audience. I love it. This is great. Oh my God. It's a standing ovation. Oh, Cat. Oh. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am wonderful. Good. Now, what are you? Were you surprised we actually had breakfast for you? I know. First thing, where's the breakfast, Bob? <laughs> and it's pop tarts, oranges, apples, yeah. all the stuff you guys eat. Yeah. All that good stuff. It's perfect. So, how's the training been going? Good. Um, yeah, pretty good. You. This is a tough course, <laughs> a tough person's course. Yeah. You so, like it? Yeah. I mean, I was out here for the seventy point three worlds. Yep. Um, and I had a good. Two or three weeks, yeah, yeah, before that to train on the course. Um, and I'm staying in the same place now, and I've been out here for 10 days already. So, again, I've just been out on the course nearly every day, trying to just soak up all of the little all of the little hills. So, yes. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's one of those courses that it's – there's a lot of thinking going on, right? Because somebody went by, I went by them, and it's a long day, and you've got to be – you've got to basically be thinking the whole time. Yeah, I think I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you ever not think during a race? I think people just go wrong if they do that. So, but um, yeah, it's going to be fun. So you're a physiotherapist officer in the British Army. Yeah. So I've been serving with the British Army for, I'm, uh, since 2015. Um, I started as a physiotherapist and now I'm supported to do full-time triathlon. Yeah. They support you to yeah. go and kick other people's ass. Too right. I like that. Yeah. That is a good gig to get. <laughs> so when you, you got into this sport, when did you get into the sport? Yes, yeah, so I've been in the sport for a few years, um, since 2015, turned pro 2019, and then, yeah, I guess you know the rest. <laughs> I do, yeah. So uh, then 2019, breakthrough, four middle distance podiums, and then you got 16th at 70.3 Nice, which you probably weren't very happy with, right? But... Um, okay. I turned pro three or four months before that, so no, 16th is pretty good for me. Uh, that's very <laughs> cool. But then you set a uh, course record in Ironman Florida 2020 and 2021, second Ironman Tulsa, and you got, you know, look at 2021 was just this epic season, right? Fourth at Grand Canaria, and then third at Tulsa, win the UK. And you look at the some of the races that are on here, when you look at, at uh, Lanzarote and I, UK, those are tough courses. Yeah. And yep. that's this. Yeah, I mean, coming second to Daniela Rife at Tulsa, and that course is pretty tough. And yes. then to back that up five weeks later in Ironman UK, which was like an hour longer. Yeah, I'm, I like the tough courses. So. And in terms of the, dis the time in between, it doesn't seem to bother you having short distance between races, or you, what do you prefer? I wouldn't say that that was... Uh, the best for performance uh, yeah. having a short time before but i think it can work well and i guess i've shown that it works well and i guess interestingly the after this race four weeks afterwards i'm doing the sub eight so i'm hoping it will be fine for me well let's talk about just the the tech the technique for the sub eight because you're you know you, you can have what 10 pacers and you decide if the swim the bike the run how you use them yeah you got it. <laughs> and so what, you, what have you decided? What are you doing? Well, it's all a little bit uh, tactical at the moment because obviously we don't want to give too much away at the, still with just a few weeks to go to Nicola's team. Um, so I have... I don't think she has YouTube. I don't <laughs> think she's watching. She has no idea. You never know. Yeah, we have a, um, a breakfast of Bob. Nobody's seen it before. Well, you won't be watching. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll distribute my those 10 people over the swim and mainly the bike. Uh, right. The bike's where I'm going to make the most time up. I think tactically, aerodynamic, um, aerodynamically yes. it's, it's obviously the place you can make the most time because it's yep. the longest part of the race. Um, and obviously capitalizing on other people rather than the run being it's more about yourself. Um, so yeah, that's... Do you guys go at the same time? 
You like when you you yep. and Me Nicola? And Nicola. Yeah, we'll start uh, together. And the same with the guys? Are uh, they, yep, they separate so. or they start with you guys? I I will find out. Oh, <laughs> you don't know, yeah. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. Yes. On, I guess to me it doesn't... I so don't it's Alistair and Christian. Matter. Alistair and Christian and me and Nicola, yeah. How fun is that? Yeah, it's going to be... You got the Olympic gold medalist right there and silver medalist. Cool to race her. Right? Uh, well, how fun. And, In but, her final and it wasn't like well. you've been planning this for a year. When did, no. they, when did you decide to do this? Um, unfortunately, obviously, as you know... Lucy's um, out, yeah. Lucy's been injured, um, so there was an opportunity and I jumped at it right. um, so the last four weeks the admin has been gratefully taken off me by my husband Mark um, and I'm just f focusing on making sure I can win <laughs> the world champs first right and then go into St George ready to do a PB right so the I mean the goal here is to win yeah that's my goal of course and you and now you're you're already in the Kona as well uh, no, no, no. What? With all these different races? Yeah. You didn't I, get a Kona spot yet? I didn't uh, chase one because I knew that I, I knew that I'd get one here. Um, so. That's uh, so the goal is you, yeah. you win it, you get your Kona spot, you go win Kona. I think you have to come you top, drop the 20, mic. top 20 or something here to get Kona qualification. So. Oh, well, no. But, <laughs> but if you're going to be top 20, you might as well win the thing. Well, yeah, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> It is so fun. How have you balanced the training for sub seven with? Because that's two different things. That's a, you know, you're you're getting some uh, some little drafting help, mm. and here you, it's all climbing, and it's it's brutal. Yeah, <laughs> two I, different worlds. <laughs> so I think the biggest thing with sub eight is that it will be such a team project, and obviously coming into it late and last minute, it's going to be about making sure our communication as a team is absolutely great on the day. So, so you guys use walkie, you know, what are they uh, doing? There, in the rules, there will be, I think, um, some communication devices allowed, okay. um, but we're working on that again. Oh, now, all your, all your pacers women, guys? Yep, all women. All women. Okay. All women, and mostly uh, British and Irish. So, okay, so you can, Lucy nice could swim with you. She hasn't made the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, you better pick up your swim. Yeah. <laughs> that is fun. I need I need people who will um, help me swim, and I think she'll be too fast. Oh, she'll be too far. You need somebody who's about the same and a little faster. Yeah, who wants to help me go faster? <laughs> yes, who wants it? Okay, that is so cool. What's been the biggest surprise for you? Just going from you know not really a triathlete at all to really becoming one of the best in the world. Oh. I guess I don't, I haven't made, I don't think I get that title yet. One of the best. Uh, still feels a little bit surreal to be ranked so highly. Um, but I guess the surprise is the atmosphere um, within the professional female field. Mm -hmm. When I first started triathlon, I think I saw it as, as quite elite and everybody was very um, insular. and They don't and talk to each yeah. other. And, and I guess, and that was wrong. And now you come to an event and even within the most competitive field in the world, there's people saying, oh, hey, you know, and everyone's getting together for coffee and everyone's out riding and you stop and it doesn't matter. You say hi and it's, of it's course. a community. But I, I, I think that's what makes our sport so special because it's never you against Lucy or someone else. It's you against you and you against the course. Yeah. I mean, it is <laughs> at your guys' level at the end of the day, but that's really going to come down to the last 10K I of the run. with Iron Man, it yes. has to be you against the course, doesn't it? And right. everybody else features, but less so than in a you know head-to-head -head 10k run right. battle or something but you sort of need each other because oh, yeah. you know to see wait they did what in workout <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta up there or you look at their splits from a race and you're going oh my god all these women yeah. are running 252 250 I, i've got to pick it up well totally that we we set the barriers and the limits for the next you know the next year and i've come to the sport where like daniela arrive has been setting these bike Yes. you know uh, targets i guess like she's, that's what she's, they are they're targets she's set the splits and it's been like whoa okay yeah that's the new norm that's the new aim you know and Anne runs a 250 at kona yes okay that's the new goal not sub three 250 right <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's funny we were just chatting the other day it used to be believe it or not that in the early 80s the women walked all the aid stations right and we're running 310 off the bike, yeah. but the Punto sisters from Canada would walk every aid station. And it wasn't until this woman named Erin Baker in 1987 hmm. ran by Paul Newby Fraser while she was walking at an aid station where she was like, oh, I don't think I can do that anymore. But it's funny how it takes one person to yeah. take the level 
to uh, to just a whole new degree. Yeah, and I guess um, on that note, <laughs> yeah, it would be really cool to come into the sport late and n break some of those barriers and set new norms. I guess to right. to people who aspire to do the sport that haven't always been in the sport or don't look like the right sort of person to be a great runner or they don't feel like they're the they could ever be a world champion. And I right. think that's like that motivates me. To inspire that next yeah, person. Yeah. Is it from a pro level or just from getting into the sport? Anything. Anything. It, health. Uh, I, so as a physiotherapist, yeah, so you're my all about health and like fitness. Health, yes. Fitness, happiness, it all ties in together. And so maybe a little bit cringe, but I, it doesn't matter what performance level no. you are. I think it's just about being happy, healthy, fit. Well, I, I, why I love this sport is when you're 50 years old and you're a runner, you're not running faster when you get to 55 and 60, where in this sport, you can get faster wheels. You can, yeah. you can train differently. You can seriously get faster as you age. Plus, it doesn't matter if you're big or small. It doesn't, nobody cares, right? Yeah. It's, it's how you get from point A to point B. So there's yeah. really no, it used to be, okay, Greg Welch won the Ironman and he's 5'7". You've gotta be a little guy. Crowey was, you know, was sort of short, but then, then all of a sudden, Jan Frodeno is this huge guy and yeah. he's winning. So you're the, your body type doesn't matter. Yeah. It's it's just and it's quite cool. Do. Like if you look at the field today, you've got Anne Haug and myself. Right. We probably couldn't be more different. And no question. It doesn't matter. We'll no. See. One person will come out on top, not one. You know, one image or body shape. So. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It, it, with your real profession, that's something you look at. That yeah. hey, we want to make sure that body image is everybody's body image is good, and that that's this sport is an equal opportunity abuser. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't care. I love Big, that. small, right? Doesn't yeah. doesn't care. Women, male. Missing a body part Other. in a wheelchair. Just come do yep. it. And try it out. What's been your favorite moment from triathlon? Um I mean winning is quite fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it honestly, is. Um I I still love I have so much passion for the training and the, the yes. lifestyle when I get a week where my husband's got a week off work and we get to go and just have fun do some training together and also just go and also just have fun as yes. well that, yeah. that's that's the best thing where about you the sport. where it's the lifestyle yeah you're, you're traveling and that's the other cool thing is you don't go to you go to pretty nice places you're here in St. George, Utah. Hopefully in October, we'll see you in Kona, right? That'll be your first. You, you've not been to Kona before. I uh, visited. Uh, I watched you visited. You watched. in 2019. And what did you gain from that, from watching it? Oof. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> you realize yeah. how hot it is. Yeah. yeah. I think I got the vibe. I got the I got a I got addicted to that race just by being there and watching it. Yeah. Um I hadn't done an Ironman yet at that point and oh, you so, had? Oh, so okay. I was like I was training for my first one and I was thinking, Oh my goodness, I wanna go to Hawaii. So it's yeah, I got a lot of inspiration. And the other thing that you gain sometimes is when you're out on the course and why, because you don't gain this from watching on TV. When you watch them live, you can sort of see their faces and see what's going on and see the gaps and go, oh, well, this person's off the back. And the next thing you know, they're leading. And there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes that you, you don't see unless you're there and you're standing in lava fields. Because normally you're watching it in an air-conditioned house and you're like, <laughs> oh, it's not bad. Yeah. I mean, I did watch a lot of it in an air-conditioned <laughs> cafe, but <Exactly. laughs> I did see a lot of people suffering on the run, which, uh, yeah, it gives you a lot to think about, especially when you're training for it and really yes. going to focus on it. The thing about this course that I love is the fact that there's no preconceived notion of what's going to happen, I know. right? I mean, you've had 70.3 here, but you haven't had a full here since 2012 or something yeah. like that. So and the wind seems to be making a lot of difference. Everyone's talking about it at the moment. You know, this whole week, it's like, oh, what's the headwind going to be? And I think, whichever direction it's going to be, it's going to change the bike course completely. Yeah. Um, and I think again, it'll have a small effect on the run. If there's no wind, that run course is going to be so hot. It's yes. going to be very hard. And I guess because again, we haven't had a world champs in two and a half years. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, and also it's beginning of season. Who knows what type of shape people are well, really in? I actually think that's an excuse that somebody might want to use. I don't think it's the beginning of the season. I think it's the world champs and it's been this way for the last six months. So if people want to see it as the start of their season, yes. I'd say they were in the wrong. Not, <laughs> you know, not, we should be embracing this as a world champs. Exactly. You don't see in October when people come to Kona. Oh, it's the end of the season. It, oh, yeah. Nobody's, oh, so they're, they're, nobody's <laughs> saying, oh, I'm getting ready for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> 
Minnesota. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're there to win that race. And obviously, there's a lot of people here who are here to win this race. But you wonder if they're back in 30th place and the wind is howling and they still have to climb Snow Canyon and then do the, the marathon with 1,500 feet of climbing, how motivated and inspired they're going to be to do that. So it, it, could be, it could be interesting to see how many people actually make it to the finish. I agree. And the women's field is already quite small. Yes, so. Uh, what, 20-some athletes now? Yeah. So, I mean, if you go off Kona stats, how much of a percentage of the field drop out uh, there's across the percentage. male and the women? Yeah. I think it's... it's Way fifth, higher than 40, the regular age group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I... If we have fifth, if we have twenty women finishing, I think that would be a great day. Yeah, well, if, if you have fifteen finishing, that would mm, be a great day. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, just because of the the but attrition. But I think I think that that doesn't have any detriment on the women's field. Not I think all. that shows how hard it is, having had two and a half years out, to build for a world championships, mm -hmm. mentally and physiologically and finish this race in these conditions. I think it's the whole package. Well, and also the outside, you've got, you know, you're dealing with COVID, right? There's just people getting here, getting here healthy and ready yeah. to race yeah. and not being sick. We've had too many people who we've lost that way as well. So yeah. Kat, have yourself a wonderful race. Thank and you. I'm glad you finally got to meet Poncho Man. <laughs> Gonna take my horse to the old town road. Gonna ride. I can't ride no more. Gonna take my horse to the old town road. We're gonna ride till we can't no more. And breakfast with Bob. And Pancho Man. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and we will be right back.